What's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Hi, honeybees. Listen, I am super excited to come to you guys tonight um, with a, another a beautiful apothic red blend. As you guys know, this is the third in our series of beautiful, beautiful red wines, red blends from Apothic. Um, please meet Apothic Red. Oh, I've never had Apothic Red before. Um, I am, as you guys know, a Pothic Dark girl, um, and we did dark, um, two wines ago. That was our second wine in our holiday wine series. And then we did Crush, um, which I had never had before because, again, I'm a dark girl. I've always just drank dark and, of course, a myriad of other um, different brands of wine. But in the Apothic series, I've always only had dark. So um, Apothic Inferno, which was our first wine, I had never had before. And um, Apothic Crush, which was the third wine in our series I'd never had before. And um, now Apothic Red, which I've never had before. And I went to the most amazing wine store today, okay? So <laughs> I went because I bought a giant case of the Apothic Inferno, because as you guys remember, it was a limited batch release. So, um, I had someone come over on Monday, and we had wine and cheese, and, you know, I was down a bottle on my case. I, I can't have that. So, I went back to the store to get another bottle of the Inferno to put back in the case, only to find out that my wine store here didn't have it. And they sent me up to, now this is Mississippi, this is a country, um, not only am I putting up with higher price points here in Mississippi, but um, yeah, I had to go to Frank's Bait Shop and liquor store about five miles up yonder, okay? <laughs> Which I did. I get there, I swing the door open. You guys, it was like a pot of gold being hidden in a cow pasture. I promise you, I was so shocked. Rose and rows of beautiful bottles of wine, Tuscan and Italian and African and South African and white, red, Chardonnays, Shiraz, Malbecs, Merlots, Pinots, um, Rieslings, Moscatos, Chardonnays, did I mention Chardonnays? Beautiful, beautiful about champagne. The the liquor, the actual liquor section was like this big, and the wine section was like choo, 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 choo. rows and rows of beautifully stored wine. And that is where I found my replacement bottle of Inferno and my beautiful friend Apothic Red. Now, you guys know. 
I wait until I'm here with you all to experience the wine. I want you guys to get my first impression of the wine and um, hopefully in the process learn a little bit more about the wine. So shout out to Frank's Bait Shop and um, little gems in small places, little unexpected gems. <laughs> okay, so um, let's read the label. I've got to get my educated glasses on because this is all about education. It's nothing to do with eyesight. It's about looking educated while we are educating. Okay? All right. Apothic Red, <clears throat> inspired by the Apotheca, mm. a mysterious place where wine was blended and stored in 13th century Europe. Apothic Red offers a truly unique wine experience. Hmm. Okay. A masterful blend of rich Zinfandel, smooth Merlot, flavorful Syrah, or Syrah, S Y R A H, Syrah, and bold Cabernet Sauvignon creates layers of dark red fruit complemented by the hints of vanilla and mocha. I said mocha, y'all. <laughs> Let's pour. Of course, I've already opened because we have to let it open up. I like to leave this little part here and just take it off, you know, while you guys are watching. I think that it heightens the experience a bit. I don't know why. I just always wait to take it off till right before I pour. Okay. Let's look. Mm, 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 mm. Never ever have water in your glass when you're in your, in your glass when you're gonna pour your wine. Okay. Don't do that. I thought I saw something. That's why I panicked a little bit. Let's look at the paint, you guys. Oh. Doesn't have a lot of paint. Doesn't have a lot of paint. Hmm. Listen, this looks like Aphrodite. It looks like the Af color Aphrodite in lip. It's a little Aphrodite, you guys. Hmm. I'm liking you already. Okay, let's smell. Hmm. I don't know. Thirteen point five percent alcohol by volume. Although that is not normally something I concern myself with when I am drinking a good wine, uh, because I'm a pacer, and so you know, like volume to me really should matter to you if you're a lightweight or if you're a guzzler. 
I am more of a experiencer, so I can sip uh, this glass of wine for the next 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. I will tell you this. This wine is familiar. It's a very familiar wine. It has, <clears throat> it doesn't have the boldness of Inferno. It doesn't have the depth of dark. Um, it's a little closer to Crush, which is very whimsical, very fruity top notes, fruity, 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 fruity. And it's just got a hint, an undertone of Apothic Dark. It doesn't have the deepness of Apothic Dark. Apothic Dark has some really dark, very tones in it. This um, it's the Zinfandel. It's the Zinfandel. It's the Zinfandel that's giving me this really sort of dry What could I put this wine with? I could put a pot of red with chicken. Something savory. The Cabernet Sauvignon and the White Zinfandel gives it sort of this dry mouth feel. <sighs> Un momento. Okay, well, I went off camera to muddy my palate a little bit, you guys. Um, remember me talking um, with you guys about on on a pop it crush about muddying your palate a little bit just sort of breaking up that flat plane in your mouth having a little smoked nut little cheese little roasted nut I tried that and um hmm flavor just stays right there real flat so I went to get my little portable hookah. Yes. <clears throat> okay, just as I suspected, this wine is a very very made for some from some very dry reds <clears throat> and so consequently um the bottle itself is pretty dry it's pretty flat and what that means is that for me is that the flavor palette doesn't change very much it stays pretty consistent um one of the things I love so much about Dark and about Inferno um, and ultimately about Crush is that I could <clears throat> uh, 
enjoy different components, flavor components of the blend, depending on what items I use to um, muddy my palette. The reason I use my portable hookah is because I also like a good red wine when I go out to have a cigar or when I go out to um, have hookah. I'll have a sort of flat um, bottle of red, you know, red blend or a Syrah by itself or a Cabernet Sauvignon by itself because most of the time when you, when you go out, they don't have blends. So I'll get a real dry wine. Um, and <clears throat> so using my, my little portable hookah, it kind of confirmed for me, this is a good table wine. I mean, it'll go with chicken. It'll go with fish. It will go with, you know, spinach dip, any of those things. It's a real, like I said, flat, stable, conservative, more pedestrian red. And in my opinion. Still some good tones there like <clears throat> the dark. Okay, the dark has some rich tones. Those rich tones are in there, but they're fleeting. They're very fleeting what you are left with is this really dry parched sort of mealy palette <clears throat> and when i say parched i just mean that you know it's just not as lively on the tongue it's just not as lively on the palate as our previous wines. Um, still some fruity tones, but those tones are flat. It, they're, they're not um, whimsical. They're not bouncy. They're not floaty. They just get in there and they do their job. They are pedestrian. They, it, <clears throat> listen, beautiful bottle. Beautiful packaging, great bottle of wine for the dinner table. It will please uh, a myriad of people. Um, it won't offend. It won't um, push you over the edge. Um, but it won't wow you. Still a very good table wine. Is it a wow? Mm. No, not for me. So I have to say um, that I would give this bottle, uh, this particular um, mm -hmm. bottle, Apothic Red, in the Apothic Red Blend series, a... Two and a half honeybees. Two and a half honeybees out of five honeybees. Still a good bottle table wine. It's not something I would buy um, to <clears throat> listen to music and dance around the house. It's something I would buy if I needed a bottle of red wine for the dinner table. Um, nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, honeybees, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I hope you enjoyed meeting uh, Apothic Red. Um, if you're looking for a more conservative, um, less enthusiastic red blend of wine, if you try it for yourself. 
You be the judge. This is just my little old small opinion. What do I know? Hmm. Okay, honeybees. Until next time, honeybees. I'll holler.